and welcome back to another episode of This Healthy Life Podcast. I'm very excited for my guest today, Shaylin Dominique. And Shaylin is a functional diagnos- diagnostic nutrition practitioner, ADAPT functional certified health coach, and a mind, mind body spirit release specialist. She focuses on helping women overcome weight loss resistance caused by chronic illnesses such as gut issues, mold toxicity, hormonal imbalances, and Lyme disease. With her comprehensive and integrative approach, Shaylin guides her clients towards achieving their health and wellness goals. And I'm so excited for you to share your wisdom today. I have personally worked with you in my own weight loss resistance struggle that I have been tormented by for the past eight years. Mm -hmm. And we were able to uncover so many things together. So, so excited to have you here as a guest to share all your knowledge and wisdom, uh, your own personal journey, how you got into this and what you can, what everyone can learn from you today. So welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Erica, for having me. I'm super excited to geek out with you on this topic. Yes. (laughs) We we love talking about this, don't we? A little bit too much. (laughs) It's You said we've been both on this journey, so we know how it feels, right? Yeah. And your body is just holding on to the fed. Absolutely. So let's start with a quick introduction about yourself and what led you to specialize in weight loss resistance and helping women on a similar journey. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been my own story. I used about six, seven years ago, I lived in an apartment in Miami, knew nothing about functional medicine. I was back then in journalism. My apartment had mold. We cleaned it with bleach. It was on a tribal, which is basically the worst thing that you can do because mold has these hyphae-like structures. So it looks clean, but it's still there. So within just a couple of weeks, I got bedridden, no energy, just my brain was not functioning anymore. It was just like a huge burden, but really the most, the thing that really um, affected me the most is because I was always fit, healthy. Yes, when I go on a vacation, I gain a couple of pounds, but I can easily redirect it. So all of a sudden, I gained 44 pounds in six weeks and it did not come off. And as new women typically do it in the beginning, we try to look the fault within ourselves. So I ate less, I tracked every calorie, all of a sudden I thought, okay, maybe I cannot eat carbs anymore, cut all the carbs out, went on super restrictive boot camps, thought maybe you're not moving enough, crazy diets like the bulletproof diet where you only drink uh, coffee anymore with butter in it. So I had maybe four or 500 calories, continued to gain weight. So then I was like, okay, this is something where we really need to look deeper into. And I went to conventional doctors and I shared with them the story that I just gained a bunch amount of weight that I'm just not feeling like myself. I also looked like very I wasn't technically overweight, but I looked unhealthy. So my face was swollen, puffy. All of a sudden, like within six weeks, your clothes don't fit anymore. Uh, you notice know something isn't right, right? And I shared with them the story, tracked every calorie. So I knew exactly how many calories I was eating because I became so ex- obsessive in my mind. And the, what I heard is your laptop comes back normal. Stop drinking alcohol. Stop eating secretly candy. And that's basically been it. So this was a, a sentence I heard over the two years. Wow. Secretly yeah. eating candy. Huh? <laughs> that's their that's their answer for, for what you're struggling with. Unbelievable. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a normal part of aging, right? This is normal. But I was in my 20s and I was like, no, no this is not crazy. normal. <laughs> yeah. And then I found actually a functional doctor. I remember it was in Canada and I think he had good intentions, but he also didn't really have the functional approach dialed in because I had all the signs and symptoms of a parasitic infection, had all the signs and symptoms of a mold toxicity. He never tested me for mold. And because the gut test came back normal, he said, I don't have parasites. So so I didn't know it back then, but then I, that was really the point where my health really became worse and worse. I remember I was with my boyfriend back then in a restaurant and my brain fog and energy became just so severe. When he talked to me, I just looked him in the face and I couldn't even say the mm-hmm. mouth, the, the words that were in my head because I was too tired to say it. And then I was really like, okay, this cannot go on like this. And I came across functional medicine. I did all the research, took me a few months. And then I found out about all these tests that you can do on on yourself Mm -hmm. and how conventional lab testing and functional lab testing is something completely different. So when a conventional lab test comes back normal, it doesn't mean anything. And I I did all the tests and then it was all there on paper, right? Parasites, heavy metals, Lyme toxicity, severe mitochondrial dysfunction. My cortisol was to the roof because of all these infections. And 
as, as severe as it looked, I was really happy because I had an answer, right? I was not mm -hmm. crazy because you, you start to doubt yourself, right? You think about what am I doing wrong? Is it me? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And um, just a few weeks into the broader course, finally, my energy came back and to reverse really everything. It took me about eight months and um, I went back to health. And that's why I chose to um, switch my profession. And I now help women to just achieve the same dealing with chronic illness, with weight loss assistance. It just, I always say when there is something going on with the body it's two scenarios mm -hmm. there's something in the body that doesn't belong there so we need to take it out but sometimes also when we have a leaky gut or parasites you might have chronic nutrient deficiencies and then the biological processes aren't working so we need to put something in and that's basically the mechanism how we get the body back into homeostasis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely great thank you so much for sharing your story you know it's so frustrating how many women out there are struggling with similar stories and like you said they go to their conventional doctors and do lab work and everything looks normal on paper and you know the best the doctors can tell you is eat less exercise more and most women are already doing that because you're so traumatized by what's happened to your body and you're like they kind of like almost shame you and make you think that you're doing something wrong when it's yeah. something way beyond that you know it's something physiological that's happening in your body and they just aren't educated yeah. to find it so it's great Absolutely. to have resources like you. And so I'd love to chat a little bit, you know, we're using the term weight loss resistance. So what is exactly is weight loss resistance compared to just, you know, typical weight loss challenges that people might feel? Because there definitely are going to be some people that are gaining weight because they're eating inflammatory foods or they're eating, yeah. you know, foods that aren't good for them or they are secretly eating candy, yeah. you know, things like that. There are definitely this is a batch of people like that. But then there's also a lot of people that like I'm not doing anything wrong and my body is just holding on to this weight. So let's dive into what the difference is between the two and how people can tell which one is which. Yeah, so definitely we have an obesity epidemic, right? Like people are just getting obese, um, but it's also not typically because they have weight loss assistance. It's just because they're eating the wrong type of foods and it's not even their fault. We are not educated properly mm -hmm. around foods, right? If I'm not watching TV, but if mm -hmm. someone puts on the TV, like so many advertisements about cereals, candy, like it's a sugar epidemic, it's a starch epidemic, we are supposed to eat whole foods, nutritious food, animal proteins. But even if we just go to the grocery store and we buy, let's say, a basket of strawberries, which should be healthy, one strawberry has up to 200 chemicals in it. So our mm -hmm. food, we have to really be super educated to be able aware to what can we eat, what's healthy for us. If we go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. all the, the foods are covered in seed oils. Yes, yeah. it might sound healthy, a, a steak with vegetables, but the steak is probably not organic. So it's pumped with antibiotics and the vegetables are not organic. They're filled with pesticides and cooked in seed oils. So we have the disaster already there. So some people yeah. just notice, and this is really where the weight is coming on because it's inflammatory foods. Some people just eat hyper-processed foods, right? We didn't have them a couple of hundred years ago mm -hmm. and it just causes insulin resistance, leptin resistance a lot of conditions. So this is when the people are just uneducated about how to eat properly. But then there are also come people to work with me and that's really the majority of the women. They, I would say 90% are really in that camp where you have been as well. You knew mm -hmm. how to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. I remember in our first session, you said, oh, I have a, a filter for my heart, for my water about the whole mm -hmm. house. So I knew you were educated, right? <laughs> yes. In the sense that you didn't know how to eat properly. Yeah. But yeah you were holding on to weight. And this is really when the women come to work with me, they're doing everything right to a T. They know to eat, they know they have to move their body, they know they have to have sun exposure, all these things, they know they have to sleep properly, yet the body just is holding on to weight and it will not let go of it no matter what. And then we really need to dig deeper. So what I typically see with weight loss assistance, the main drivers are really toxins and pathogens. And what we really see now in functional medicine is toxins are the main root cause. So when we speak of toxins, it can be environmental toxins such as herbicides, pesticides, toxins from skincare. Um, but then we also have heavy metal toxicity, microtoxin, mold exposure toxicity. And every single toxin that we are exposed to, or like the majority of toxins, they are lipophilic. That means they are affiliated to fat. So what is happening? Um, we are exposed, the average American is exposed to 200,000 toxins daily. So that means our drainage pathways get overburdened. We have our liver or gallbladder, the mitochondria. And yes, they should be able to take the trash can out, but we live in an environment where they are just not able to keep up if we don't do the things like doing a sauna, taking our binders, taking our supplements that keep the drainage pathways open. 
So that means we have these exposures on a daily basis. Drainage pathways gets overwhelmed. Um, and then the, then the body is always smart, right? The body always works in our favor. The body says, okay, I don't care if Erica carries 20 extra pounds. I really don't care. I just want her to be healthy. So in order to prevent that your liver, your gallbladder, your organs and tissues don't get damaged, I just put it into the fat cells because that way we, we continue um, to, to have her health basically stabilized. And then when we have these toxins in our body, what we have to really also speak about, because some people, they still think no one has parasites, no one has viral uh, infections, bacterial infections, we all have them. It's really just a matter if they are overgrown. No one of us is sterile. I have at the moment no. parasites. We have, the moment parasites. We have viral infections. They're, every they're everywhere. You know, you like, I, I actually just did a, an interview recently with Kim Rogers from uh, yeah. Mrs. Rogers Hood. And it's just like, it's, there's no avoiding it. So you have to just assume that that is something that's contributing to health issues and weight loss resistance exactly. and kind of stay on top of it and cleanse a couple of times a year, you know? Exactly. Yes. And the toxins are really what we see now, the main issue. So when toxins are in our body, let's say the parasites go to the toxin side because they want to degrade these. In this process, they do something that's called pleomorphism. That means they go from a harmful for a harmless version, uh, no, from a harmless to a harmful version. That's the right uh, order. And then basically they grow over, they eat these toxins and that's when they really wreck, wreck havoc on the body. And then it's just like a soup of toxins and pathogens and that tanks our immune system. That means we don't have anyone standing at the door anymore and saying, no, you're not allowed in. Everyone is welcome. We basically become like a sponge for toxins, pathogens. I remember your toxic burden was like sky high and we were like, yeah. where does it come from? Right. Like where, yeah. And it's yeah. like, and a lot of times, you know, there's people that have a HLA gene, like myself included. And I think it's what 30, 33% of the population has it. And you just hold on to it. Like your body's not able to kind of tag and be like, like, hey, this doesn't belong here. Let's get this out. So your body's just holding on to this, storing it and causing all sorts of health issues. And yeah, you know, it's interesting that you you mentioned the pesticides too, because even if you're buying organic, you're still getting pesticides. And I just saw a report that came out recently. Uh, they tested 42 or 46 packaged gluten-free foods, many of them organic, and they tested extremely high for pesticides. And there's one, the Bonza uh, chickpea or lentil pasta. It was the highest score of pesticides any product has ever tested for, like so insanely high, so toxic. And all these people are eating it because they think they're being healthier and like, you know, eating a plant-based pasta and all these things. And so, and many of the gluten-free foods actually even tested positive for gluten, which you and I have talked about this. I find that all the time. So it's just so sad because you can't trust your food. You can't go to the store and say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to be conscious, trying to make a healthy, better choice. And you're still being exposed to all these toxins that, you know, are causing issues that you don't even know where they're coming from anymore. Exactly. So. And that's such an interesting point that you have here right now, because what I'm seeing in my practice as well is that people tend to be hyper, the immune system just goes haywire when they eat fruit and vegetables. But it's not necessarily because they don't tolerate fruit and vegetables. It's because the fruit and vegetables are just covered in poison, right? And really when people are like very, very sick, sometimes what only works for them is the carnivore diet or highly carnivore because the immune system is just flaring up all the time. And like you said, it like with these healthy foods, like I'm eating a healthy pasta and then you're doing, you're not doing yourself a favor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And so let's talk about mold for a little bit. So that was one of the big triggers that set off your your weight loss resistance. And I definitely think that is a big contributor to mine. It's definitely, I know I can tell when I stay at a hotel or get exposed to mold, I definitely get puffy and flamed. I gain weight right away. And so now, you know, we've worked out a plan that I'm more proactive about it. If I travel, I just automatically am taking some things just to try to protect myself a little bit. So let's talk about how mold plays a role in weight loss resistance. I think one of the latest stats I've seen is like 51% of buildings in the U.S. have some sort of water damage and, you know, public buildings and schools especially are even higher. So you're going to these places every day, you're working, you're at home. So let's talk about how mold causes weight gain, weight loss resistance and what people can do about that. Yeah, so that's a very valid point you already mentioned. It's like we cannot escape mold. So mold is everywhere and we just have to see how to handle it. So what mold does, it is really like it is an immune suppressant. So that means it tanks your immune system and it also goes first after the mitochondria and after the liver. So this is important to know because the mitochondria are responsible for energy production. So when you don't have any more energy, Plus, they also do something that's called oxidizing body fat. The modern mitochondria really help us to oxidize body fat, to get, to get rid of body fat. If these two things are not happening anymore, then you're just tired all the time. Weight gain is an uphill battle. But then the main organ mold also goes after is the liver. And the liver is our main detoxification um, 
um, pathway. So when these all the things are impaired, this automatically it automatically causes weight gain. But also mold is highly lipophilic. It means it's attracted to the fat cells. So it's either stored in the we have a lot of fat in the brain, but also in our body stores, right? And this is again the reason why the body just says, okay, I just put it into the fat cells because I want it to be healthy. And um, when whenever the mold is stored in our that's some something some people don't consider when it's stored in our fat cells, it doesn't just stop there, right? It still continues to poison you, to grow you. So it's really a downhill, um, a downhill uh, road, so to speak, because in the fat cells, it continues to poison you and you just become fatter and fatter, even with not eating more. There are certain strains, for example, the cliotoxin strain, it we women on very low calorie diets cause extremely an amount of weight. This is the, uh, the, the strain that I was affected with. And then, yes, get mold through water damage building, but also a lot of foods are like contaminated with mold, right? Corn is highly contaminated, grains, gluten, wheat. But then we also coffee, have the coffee is a big one too. You know, every, every day people are drinking a morning cup of coffee and I, to this day, like will only drink mold coffee, mold free coffee. And I even trouble with it because I've had so many bad experiences. Yeah, exactly. Mold is for me similar. So when I once in a while drink one outside, I can really feel how my heart is getting faster. Mm -hmm. Like it just kind feels jittery and nauseous. Yeah. And then we also have to also think deeper, right? The uh, animals, like the animals eat this contaminated corn and then it gets stored in their fat cells and then we eat it. And then even if we eat meat, it can be like contribute to our mold exposure if it's not grass fed, grass finished, organic. Um, we can even find it in egg products. So mold is really every place, yes. Yeah. I know I recently, I know this has been going around for a couple of months now, but the feeding expired Skittles to yeah. cattle too. I'm like, ugh, like what are we doing to our food supply? Like this is so wrong, you know? Like no one should be eating Skittles anyways. And then <laughs> feeding them to cattle that we're then eating, it's just horrifying. So, and you know, they're probably old moldy Skittles if Skittles are capable of growing mold, who knows? <laughs> to talk about all this greenwashing that's going on, right? Like when we go to the grocery store and we see like a, a meat is called natural. Natural actually doesn't mean anything at all today, right? It doesn't even mean it is free from antibiotics. It just means it's minimally processed. I mean, this definition is up to a person. Minimally processed can mean basically everything, yeah. Yeah, you really need to learn how to read food labels, decide what's actually like a true label and what's just marketing and you know things there to kind of trick you and think that you're eating healthy because even before i was educated you know i was vegetarian for a while and i thought i was being healthy but i was eating such horrible foods and you know i wasn't educated at that point so i was just going off of like food labels and marketing and like what i thought was healthy and looking back i'm just horrified that i did that to myself for so many years I'm like just glad that i know better now but there's so many people out there that you know don't have that education and i think that's a big piece um, of helping people as well as just giving people the tools to know how to read labels and understand what's healthy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, toxins in the environment too. So I know when we did my test, I had all sorts of weird, crazy chemicals that I hadn't ever even heard of that were also sky high and also contributing to, to weight gain and weight loss resistance. So what are some of the, you know, we touched on pesticides, but what are some other chemicals in our environment that people can be exposed to and kind of hold on to that can contribute to weight loss resistance? Yeah. So absolutely a big one is really all the types of different uh, chemicals that we find in our water, right? And some people, they are so anal about never drinking tap water. But then if I ask them, where does, for example, cesium come from? Uh, we find it in our shower, right? Fluoride is put in our water system and a lot of other chemicals. And then when we shower ourselves, our body is our largest organ of absorption as well. So if we only drink tap water, but then we don't have a shower filter installed, that's also one way how we can very easily just get a lot of environmental toxins. And um, very often toxins in cosmetics, in skincare, phthalates, in, in soap. Um, that's really what we mm -hmm. see. Body care products, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it's crazy because it's like, that's another one, right? Like, especially like sunscreen and things like that. Like so many of those sunscreens have ingredients that you shouldn't even be going in the sun in. And it's like, you know, you're putting this stuff in you, heating it up. Now we have all this skin cancer and people are like, oh, I thought I was being careful and all these toxins that you're putting in your body, it's just crazy. And then, so let's talk a little bit about hormone imbalances too, because, um, you know, that was also on my own journey, a big one for me. And mold is, you know, famous for disrupting hormones as well as different pesticides and chemicals. So what's your experience with like hormones and toxins and how to get that balanced in people with weight loss yeah. resistance? So typically what I really see is that hormones are not a root cause, but it doesn't mean that we cannot support them during the process, right? Yes, they would 
balance out. But if we see there is super high estrogen dominance um, going on or if there are thyroid issues, why not support the thyroid? Why not bring the estrogen down and just, just really make the road easier? When we talk about hormones, we really have to ask deeper questions, right? Where do the hormones get metabolized? In the liver and in the gut. So if we have an overburdened liver because of all the toxic soup we're like swimming in the in the in the out, then these metabolizations just don't take place. And if we have a gut full of a leaky gut, parasites, all these things, um, then also the hormones just like they, they take a back seat because the body doesn't prioritize hormones in the process. And then we also have to speak about um hormone disruptors right like all these things like plastic i think i have never seen a total tox burden that does not come high in plastic because it's like when we go in the supermarket right everything is wrapped in plastic but no we have to go a step further it's in our gym clothes like all these brands you know, lemon aloe uh, yoga covered in plastic we sweat in it and then we soak it up if we eat takeout or like they heat it up in a microwave it leaches into our food supply so these are very common um, endocrine disruptors when we take the receipt after shopping um, with our hands it absorbs into our skin so they're just very a lot of mechanisms and um, how we can get plastic because so many women also come to, me, come to me and they say oh i don't drink off plastic bottles why is this number so high it's just again about educations and plastic is a big one in hormone disruption you know? Yeah, I was surprised at some of the, the plastic ones in mine because I'm as plastic free as I can be. Like I only drink out of glass and, you know, try to be really conscious of it. But I was even just shocked. And, you know, I don't know how much of that is like old exposure that my body just held on to or things that I'm just not aware of that I'm still, you know, touching or, you know, the gym clothes one was just horrifying because I used to wear Lululemon. I don't anymore after that. And it's just like, my gosh, like. Can we do anything? <laughs> Can we wear anything? Can we eat anything? It's just crazy. Yeah, so we talked about testing a little bit and, um, you know, I'd love for you to share what labs you did. I, I don't want to talk about the ones that you did for me because I don't know if you have like general ones that you, you like to do, but what's, uh, you know, if someone goes to their conventional doctor, they're not going to be able to do this kind of testing. So they have to work with someone like you or a functional medicine practitioner. So what testing do you recommend people become aware of so that they can find the right person to do testing and evaluate of what toxins they're dealing with? So what I always think is one of the main important thing is that we clinically correlate testing and um, health history, right? Before we ordered any testing for you we had our initial consultation i reviewed eight pages on your symptoms what might be going on and we already got a pretty good picture and then the tests were basically coming in place to confirm it so that's the first step and so really to run through the signs and symptoms what is the person experience but my favorite tests are really um, functional blood work because it just gives so much information and yes it is different than conventional blood work the conventional blood work typically has just a, a fraction of the markers that we want to run but we really want to see a comprehensive blood work and then when we talk about functional versus conventional we also have to talk about the lab ranges so the lab ranges in functional medicine are way way smaller because the one conventional medicine they are based, basically um, based on the people that go to the hospital so this is also another shocking thing right it has nothing to do with optimal health conventional work is just there to uh, spot a disease when it's already full blown on but no we don't want to wait right like if we have diabetes we want to take action now and not wait until we uh, have collected this other 0.1 point to step into diabetes and then take action it just doesn't make sense so the um, ranges are much much more narrow and we also look at blood work patterns so we don't just look at marker number one if it's high or low we really look at number one number two if this one is high or low then we take a third marker and then we get the picture what might be going on so it's really to evaluate blood work patterns and another test that i absolutely love is a total tox burden because the question we have today, today ask not is are we toxic it's how toxic are we i have never run a total burden and it came back clean so it's just a matter of when we go to the detoxification process i also really like to sit down and um discuss what we have also done together where do the toxins really come from because as we already touched on many people are not aware where it comes from and yes we can take it detox process and get them better but if we don't do the education part and tell them hey you have to stop um, um, eating these these foods so if you eat uh, conventional food you have to put them in the ozone bubbler to just make these lifestyle changes along the way that the garbage doesn't get filled again half a year later on and then the third test I absolutely love is the gut tumor test. It's the most digestive, uh, extensive digestive health, te uh, gut digestive test that we have on the market. It measures more than 300 microbes. I remember yours was actually quite good. I remember like, yeah. the, <laughs> like wow, you're the green rage. This is really, really rare. And it just tells us like not only what's overgrown,
alone, but also the microbes that we are missing. And since we have 70 to 90 percent of our immune system that's sitting in the gut, it's just a very important piece to really strengthen our immune system because then we have a strong immune system, then we are able to defend these pathogens and toxins that we might be exposed to because this is optimally how it should be, right? Yes, we can in an Airbnb and it has mold, but it really should not wipe us out because we should have the immunity to really defend um, any pathogen or toxin exposure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, you know, you, that's a good point that you brought up, you know, after the people are just kind of going back to their old, old habits and six months are kind of refilling the, the toxin bucket. So what are things that people can do you know, once they do some of these detox and they, once they address these things to make sure that those things don't come back, like what are good kind of daily detox things that you can integrate into your life? Mm -hmm. So what is really huge are that's just the things that to focus on the things we do every single day, right? We eat every single day, we drink every single day, so we should have clean food. If you cannot afford it, purchase an ozone bubbler. It's a hundred dollar device and you can really wash off all your pets. Besides, this is a tip I love. Um, then just getting a clean water filter, right? Like we, uh, if you have an exposure, depending on where you live, to radioactive elements, maybe reverse osmosis is not enough, and you should go the the route for a distilled water filter. Put a filter in your shower because you're gonna shower every single day. Diet in your sleep. Um, sleep is so so underrated. Like it's really the basics. Um, and then just go in sunshine and also just some detoxification steps. Like this it can be different for everyone. You can do exercise and break a sweat. You can do a hot Epsom salt bath. You can jump into the sauna. It's really not that complicated. And then what I really absolutely love is um, to take strategically binders and supplements. So I rotate to binders every single month to a different binder. And then depending if I, for example, go to an airplane, I take a binder that um, at, um, binds to um, radiation. If I go to uh, eat out, with, there will be herbicides and pesticides. I take a binder that binds to these herbicides and pesticides. It's just because like we cannot prevent the toxin exposure. So just like me implementing some strategies, how to really reduce it in daily life. And I am I'm also a big fan of just supporting drainage pathways. So take a good supplement for the liver, for the mitochondria, for the lymphatic system. And then you're basically good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You definitely don't want that stuff piling back up in you again. <laughs> and then yeah, that's the truth. That's also something like health is not a once and done, right? Some people, they think, okay, I'm going to this detox and then I just don't have to do anything. Maintenance supplements should always be in place. Yeah. Yeah. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> and then, so you also work with people, you know, with Lyme disease and chronic infections and things like that. What have you found, like, what's the correlation between people with Lyme or an active infection or past infection and weight loss resistance? Like what does Lyme do to this whole weight loss puzzle? Yeah. So to start off with Lyme disease, Lyme disease is way more common than we think of, right? Prior, we thought, okay, Lyme disease is really a very, very rare disease, but I really see it in approximately, I would see 80 people that come to work with me. And Lyme is a little bit more tricky because the symptoms, they are really so, they have 115 different symptoms that are attributed to Lyme disease. So it can really be clusters and sometimes you don't have these distinct symptoms, right? I just had one health participant. For her, it was really the autoimmunity coming back because typical Lyme, and Lyme signs and symptoms are migrating joint pain, pain underneath the feet of the heels, sun sensitivity, ringing in the ears, these type of things. But for her, it was really like the autoimmunity would not go back. And then she shared with me in a chat just that she has, she has OCD behaviors. And I was, she never said that before. And then it rang a bell, it's Lyme disease, right? And all the markers didn't come back. So Lyme is much, much more common than a thing that we think. And it causes really broad um, inflammation in the body. Lyme is also a huge driver of autoimmunity. And when we have autoimmunity, it also causes weight gain. Um, Lyme slows down our thyroid function. That's what you also have experienced, right? And then when our thyroid is not working, um, it slows down our metabolism and weight gain is really an uphill paddle. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So once a lot of times you find that once you start treating the Lyme and addressing the Lyme, some of that weight loss resistance goes down or not until you address the whole picture with the toxins and the, the mold and everything else that could be compounding that as well. Yeah, so with the weight loss assistance, it's always, we can never predict when the weight loss is happening. So I have some examples, right? Like Brittany, she lost a pen size in the first, the first month. Um, Kristen lost 10 pounds. But then, for example, Sarah was a very good example. She only lost weight after the six months mark because we always have, we don't know which of the factors 
is causing the weight gain, right? As it may be a drainage pathway or the parasites and it, the weight loss happens early on. But if it's the lime and the mold, it's just later on in the process. We just have to trust the process, allow the body to do its job, not be so focused on the weight gain. I know it is hard because that's why the women come to work with yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when you get so desperate to like a place yeah. of just like being so frustrated and you're like, I'm doing everything and now I'm working on detoxing and I'm still not getting the results. So, you know, yeah, it can definitely be frustrating. So let's talk a little bit about your practice. So, you know, obviously you're helping so many women overcome this. You're so helpful to me as well. So let's hear a little bit about some of the people you work with. Um, like what's been one of the most challenging weight loss resistance stories that you've had in your practice and what's been one of like the most like successful or like just really inspiring stories that you've come across as well. Mm -hmm. So what I always love, because the women that come to work with me, I have never been the first person. So they come to me, they have seen five to 10 doctors, they really don't have any more hope. And what is really the most, the, the biggest gift for me is when we get the results and they basically trust again in their health. Um, some of the most um, inspiring stories has really been an, a case of Lyme disease. Her name was Michelle. Um, she came to me, doctors called her a hypochondriac, a pers crazy person, seven years she has struggled doctor to doctor told her lab work is normal and she had Lyme disease and for her it was really not about the weight the weight was one issue she told me like she is sometimes six weeks at a time bedridden because she has so much chronic pain and she said like I cannot even remember what happened 48 hours ago and she had a little son and her heart was breaking because she said all I can do is give this child the tablet and I can't do anything and her biggest fear when she started to work with me was really um, that the lab test would come back normal and it didn't. Like her lab work, which the same one that the doctor ran, had 16 markers out of range, toxins were sky high, and then also the Lyme disease showed up um, on testosides, which is another thing, right? Sometimes um, challenging things are very often infections do not show up on testosides, toxins sometimes do not show up in testosides because they get stored in fat cells. So this is sometimes where we need to fine tone when you ask about challenges. And really always to clinically correlate and to really always remind yourself, listen to the body, because I always say the body has priority over any testicides. But back to Michelle, um, fast forward six months, she saw, she uh, sends me videos where she's going for daily walks with her son. She called for the pedal board. And that really was for me amazing to see, okay, like if we just like trust the body and do the things, um, we can reverse things in a fairly quick time. Yes, Lyme disease always takes a longer time just to be fully transparent. I would say a minimum of eight months, sometimes up to a year, depending on mast cell activation syndrome comes back in. But that was a very um, beautiful story to see. And challenging story is probably also what we discovered with you and the lipidema, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it has not just been about the toxins and the pathogens. You had another condition that came back in. And this is lipidema, and it's really also where the fat is um, not evenly di distributed, and you just did all the things that you could do, right? You have eaten well, we have worked on the toxins, we have worked on the pathogens, and we have seen some weight loss, but we have also seen some resistance still to it. And, and that's really where we have to, we did together some research. We were actually working as a team on this. Yeah. I also was doing a lot of research and this is also where things come in where the extracellular matrix is impaired, right? We have leaky lymphatics, the lymph system isn't working anymore. And these are just some conditions that I would say are not typical the norm where we have to really go a step deeper. And these are the more challenging cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is, it's another condition that, you know, conventional doctors don't know anything about. And now that I've dove deep into that world and met a lot of other people with the condition, like so many of them, similar stories to like how your journey started, like stop eating secret, like secret snacks and, you know, eat less, exercise more, and you're doing all this and there's nothing you can do because it's a genetic condition that's affected by the lymph and the hormones. And it's creating this like fibrotic fat that diet and exercise doesn't work on. So, and actually one in nine women are affected by it. Um, so it's actually a pretty high stat, you know, and I do think that there's a toxin component. Like, I don't know if mold is something that set it off for me and made it even worse because of the swelling that the mold caused or, you know, what it is. And I don't think anyone really does know, or if it was, it seemed to be triggered more after I got my stem cells, but I went back and looked at old pictures and I think I had it long before I even had Lyme. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this could be something that my body just kind of had in check and then toxin exposure or stem cells or something just really activated it to kind of go into overdrive. So yeah, definitely absolutely. so many levels, so many layers that you have to kind of just chip away at and find. So hopefully 
my story and working with me helps you with someone else on their path of their dealing with it as well. So, yeah. And especially when we talk about the challenges then, right? Like you were very in tune with your body. You told me right from the beginning, when I eat a carbohydrate, I feel like I'm blowing up, like unproportionately. But then you also had this hypothyroid condition. And when we have a thyroid condition, then the thyroid needs carbs, right? When it's under there are these different type of layers. And then you really need to see, okay, what do we need to prioritize? But also really what I always said to you, like, I'm trusting you, right? You are living in your body. And if you tell me I'm not tolerating carbs, then I'm not going to push you and uh, tell you you have to eat carbs every single day. So it's just different layers that really come into um, the, the illness. Yeah. Yeah. And then things change because now that I've been, you know, working on the lipidema and treating that, I actually am able to tolerate carbs a little bit more easily now without having the major swelling that I was getting and without having some of those side effects. So it's kind of an onion, right? Like as you peel away layers, you're going to be able to do more things or eat more foods or your body's not going to be as overreactive to things. So kind of just chipping away and cleaning out eventually, hopefully your body will get back into more of a balance. So amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this amazing information. If people want to reach out and work with you, what's the best way to find you online and social media? Yeah, absolutely. Erica, you're so welcome. I always mm -hmm. love to talk about these topics. <laughs> you can find me under uh, Instagram. That's where I show a lot of information, Dominique, And also the same, the website, Um There are a lot of articles about weight loss resistance, chronic illness. So if you're just looking into getting an idea what might be going on with, the board, with your body, that's the first good start to look into. Awesome. And we'll link to this in the show notes as well. So thank you so, so much for being a guest. I'm so excited for people to dive into this episode and hope this helps some other women out there on a similar struggle and journey. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you.